Let's take a look at these bar charts questions. Now you can use a calculator for all of them if you need to. So question number one, we're asked to draw a bar chart for this data. Um, of course, if I ask 10 students to do this, it's possible I get 10 slightly different bar charts, but the, some key characteristics that should all be the same. First of all, the number of students should be up the side and that should be labeled as number of students. Across the bottom, we should have uh, subjects and this should be broken down to maths, English, science, history, PE and geography. Now, the key thing is the scale. Now we're gonna be starting at zero. Our maximum value is nine. So there's no point doing a scale from zero up to 100. Uh, we only need to go up to nine, but I would go a tiny bit beyond nine. So I'd take that up to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Obviously these should be evenly spaced, which they're not. Um, but obviously you'd be doing this with a bit more care and attention, perhaps doing it on graph paper. Now, the key thing with the bars is the bars need to all be equally uh, spaced and they need to be of equal widths. So you might want to measure one centimeter or a couple of squares per bar um, um, on your graph paper. The key thing is maths needs to go up to two. English needs to go up to uh, five. Science to four, history to seven, PE to nine, geography to three. So PE should be the tallest and maths should be the shortest. Again, there should be a, perhaps a bit of space between them just to make it a bit clearer. But the key thing is get the scale right, label the axes and uh, make sure that every bar has the same width. So if we just take a look at the model answer here, we can see scale uh, goes up in ones up to 10, axes clearly labeled, um, each subject clearly labeled as well. All the uh, bars are the same width and they are all going to their appropriate uh, number on the y-axis there. Um, don't worry about having to write a number of students sideways. You, you can write um, horizontally if you want to. So how many students did the teacher ask? Well, that's simply all of these numbers added together and that comes to a total of 30. Question number two, how much did Connor spend on food in the fifth week? Well, across the bottom, we've got week numbers. Here's week five, and the top of this corresponds to 40 pounds. In which week did Connor spend the most? Well, that's gonna be the tallest bar, which is uh, this one here, and that is week four. And in total, over the six weeks, it's gonna be, well, week one was 42 pounds, week two was 48, week three, 38, week four, 52, week five is 40, and week six is 44. So simply add together 42, 48, uh, 38, 52, 40, and 44, and that should come to a total of 264 pounds. Question number three, we need to draw a bar chart for this data. So again, what we want is up the side, we want uh, sunglasses sold and uh, we're gonna start at zero. We need to go up to 14. So I would recommend going up to 15. Again, you might just want to go up in ones if you've got plenty of space. Again, whatever you do, don't go zero to 100. That's a complete waste of uh, space. And across the bottom, we are gonna have day, which is gonna be broken down to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, etc. And the key thing is that the bars are all the same width. Um, and that they should be equally spaced. There should be a gap between them as well. So Monday needs to go up to wherever four is. So Tuesday will be five. So Tuesday will be slightly taller than Monday. And the tallest one should therefore be Saturday, which goes all the way up to 14, which should be approaching the top of your um, bar, um, of your axis labeling there. So here we have it. So axis clearly labeled here and labeled um, on the horizontal axis as well. The scale goes from zero to 15. All the bars are equal widths and there's a gap in between just to make it look nice and pretty. And we can see that Saturday is, is was the tallest as we expected. Um, and all these numbers here, four, five, six, seven, nine, 14 and 13 should correspond with the numbers in the table, which they do. So how many sunglasses did Cara sell between Monday and Friday? So get rid of Saturday and Sunday, simply add these numbers together and we get a total of 31. And on which day did she sell the least amount of sunglasses? Well, if you take a look, uh, you can just see which, which uh, 
bar is shortest and that is the Monday one. So Monday was the least amount or you can just look at your table, look for the lowest number which is Monday. Question number four, in which month did Julie read the least number of books? So we're looking for the shortest bar which is April. Um, in which month did she read the most number of books? That's going to be the tallest one, which is May. How many more books did Julie read in January compared to February? Well, January was eight. February was three. So eight take away three is five. And over the six months, she read eight plus three plus five plus two plus ten plus six and if we add all of those together that comes to a total of 34 books. Question number five, we want to do a bar chart with this information. So we want the number of cars on the uh, vertical axis and we want colors across the bottom. So it's gonna be red, white, black, silver, blue, gray. Obviously I'd write it in full, otherwise the two Bs would be confusing there. Uh, we're going up to 11, so I would take the scale up to 12, starting at zero, going up in ones. Red would go up to seven. White would go close to the top, up to 11. And as we're drawing the bars, I mean, use a ruler, these, the widths of the bars should be the same throughout, and there should be a nice even space between them all as well. So the end result would look something like this. As you can see, axes clearly labeled, scale 0 to 12 going up in ones and we can see that the numbers well we can compare it to the table if we want but it should go uh, 7 11 9 6 5 and 2 which it does and yeah we, there are no further questions on that one so we are done question number six very similar what we want up the side is number of people so that axis clearly labeled across the bottom we want a uh, holiday destination, clearly labelled, and Spain, France, UK, America, Italy, Turkey. Again, I would use uh, write, it, write it in full rather than abbreviations. We're going up to nine, so I would take my um, scale up to ten, making sure I start at zero. Obviously, going up in ones would be appropriate. No point going up in halves or anything like that. So zero, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Obviously this would be measured or perhaps you'd use the squares um, on some graph paper to make sure that the scale is even. So Spain would need to go up to eight. France would need to go up to five. One, two, three, four, five, etc., etc. Now the key thing to remember is that the columns or the, the, the bars themselves are of equal width and that there is an even space between all of them as well. And therefore your finished bar chart would look something like this. Again, axes clearly labeled, scale zero to 12. Uh, well, I suggested zero to 10, which is which I think would be better actually because um, we've just got a bit, probably a bit too much wasted space here. So I would personally take that bit off, but it's not the end of the world if it's there. And again, all these numbers here should correspond to the numbers in the table. So 8, 5, 6, 9, 7 and 3. And as you can see, all the columns are of equal width and there is a, a nice one square gap between all of them as well. Question number seven, in which tournament did the tennis player serve the most number of aces? So which um, is the highest bar here? And that's clearly... Wimbledon. What was the difference between the number of aces served at Roland Garros and the Australian Open? Well, here is Roland Garros, which is eight. The Australian Open is 20. So the difference is 20 minus eight. So that is a difference of 12 aces. And in total, it's going to be 22 from the US Open, 14 from Cincinnati. Wimbledon is 30, 8 for Roland Garros, 4 for Madrid and 20 for the Australian Open. Just simply add them all together and that comes to a total of 98 aces.